Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take a look and see how we determine the reaction order. And yes, one word, we do it experimentally. There's no way to predict by looking at the equation, by looking at the reaction of how to figure out the, the uh, reaction order. So let's say we have a reaction, a very simple one. We have a single reactant that produces some sort of product by disassociating or reacting with something else. Um, and we want to experiment to figure out what the relationship will be to the concentration with the concentration of the of the reactant A and the reaction rate of the reaction. Of course, by definition, the rate is going to be equal to the negative change in the reaction um, in the reactant's concentration divided by the time that elapses. We can also write this in a differential form, and later on we'll go ahead and use the differential form to come up with some equations. So it's simply the rate of change of the concentration of the reactant A in this case. Of course, negative because the slope is negative and we want to account for that so that the actual result of the rate will be positive. Remember that when we look at a reaction rate, it's simply a relationship between the concentration of the reactant and the time elapsed and usually that curve looks like this and the rate is equal to the slope of that. It's simply the derivative of the relationship between the concentration and the time elapsed and so we can of course show it like this. So what do we do? How do we figure that out experimentally? Well let's say we have a solution and we measure the time that it takes for the reactant to react and for the reaction to complete. And then we go ahead and add more A to, the, to uh, the solution in order to double the concentration. And then we measure the reaction. So if we double the concentration and then we find that the rate doubles, meaning the reaction goes twice as fast, we know the order of that reactant is 1, or at least the concentration of that reactant is 1. If we find that if we double the concentration of A and then the rate quadruples, 4 times as much, then we know that the order of the concentration of that reaction is 2. And if we find that the rate is now nine times as fast when we double the concentration, then we know the order is three. And of course, we can write it like this. The rate is equal to the constant K times the concentration of the reactant to the first power, the second power, the third power to associate with order one, order two, or order three. And the way we do that is simply add some more of the reactant to the solution. Watch to see how the reaction changes, how the rate of that reaction changes, and from that we simply determine the order. Now that seems very simplistic. It's of course not that easy and that simplistic, but in some future videos I will show you how we actually go through one of those experiments. And sometimes, not only do we have a single reactant, we may have two or three reactants, and then how do we do that? And you'll see that we go, then go through a series of experiments by adding more concentration or by reducing the concentration to see how the reaction changes. And then we do that for one reactant at a time. Sometimes when there's a lot of reactants, then you have to be careful. And there's some other methods we sometimes use to try to exclude the, the influence of the other reactant because sometimes it's not as straightforward as it is here. We want to be able to eliminate the influence of the other reactants when we're dealing with just the one reactant. But again, we have a video for you ready and come, and come back and watch those other videos to see how we handle it in that case.